Welcome to Classical 95.9 WCRI's Conducting Conversations with your host, Mike Mano. One hour of music and conversation with notable people in the arts, bringing you the stories of how music has impacted their lives. The show will give a behind-the-scenes look at the guest's background, interests, or special project. Conducting Conversations is brought to you by Roberts Musical Instruments. From sheet music and brand name instruments to rentals, repairs, lessons, and more, Roberts Musical Instruments is your key to musical success. Call 823-5459. That's 823-5459. And now here's your host, Mike Mayno. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Conducting Conversations. Tonight, it's a pleasure to welcome back to our studios Contemporary Theater Company, which is an organization we haven't heard from for a while, but they've been around for a long time and very pleased that the artistic director, Tammy Brown, has come in and shared some information with us tonight. Tammy, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's great to have you. Uh, it's it's interesting to have a theater such as uh, it's as busy as the Contemporary Theater is right down the road from us, a piece, as they say, in uh, beautiful downtown Wakefield, right? Yes, absolutely. We're right on Main Street in Wakefield. People ask where we are. We're right at the kind of hub of activity, right near the pedestrian bridge, across the street from Brickley's. Definitely come on down and visit us anytime. Excellent. All right. And about how long has the Contemporary Theater been operating down in that area? So the Contemporary Theater Company has been operating as a company. We started really small, just doing one show a summer about 15 years ago. Um, But about 10 years ago, actually, we just had our 10-year anniversary just about a few weeks ago where we moved into our current home on Main Street in Wakefield. So we've been right there at 327 Main Street for just about 10 years now, and it's been a real great journey, and it's been really wonderful to kind of watch the project as, as it's built over the years. Now, when you say as it's built, you mean that literally because originally, was is there a typical theater, as people think, a movie theater type of environment where they walk into a lobby and then sit in a theater, or is it different than that? Yeah, so it's, um, it's a traditional theater. Originally, um, it, We often get mistaken for the Hera Gallery because that's what used to be in this space. In in very uh, typical Rhode Island fashion, folks are like, oh, you know, where Hera Gallery used to be. Used to be. Um, So that was there about 10 years ago. And then we moved into that space, renovated it into a theater space. So now we have a theater that seats about 100 people or so. Um, And we have a beautiful lobby where folks can come and Um, we have a full bar so people can come grab a drink or a snack before the show and then go in and sit inside the theater. Um, And we've also been expanding the grounds around it. We now own that building, that theater space, um, and we also own the property just behind it. So we also have a really beautiful performance patio um, where we do concerts, we do Shakespeare, we do all different types of performances, Um, And if you've been in downtown Wakefield recently, then you've seen our even bigger expansion um, right behind the building. We've created a whole new lobby for the outdoor patio space, brand new beautiful bar for that space as well, as well as new rehearsal rooms. Um, So it's really been a wonderful expansion. And now there's balcony seating available um, for the for the the shows out on the out on the patio. So. So patio out, outside, obviously. All right, so yes. sitting under the stars in yes. good weather. Yes, absolutely. And it's beautiful. Um, we have really lovely gardens. Um, our um, executive director and our um, facilities manager work together um, to do all the garden work themselves. And it's really, really beautiful. I mean, if you're ever in Wakefield, just stop by to take a look at it. Um, our gardens are a really lovely place to kind of hang out. And the way the stage is situated if you're watching a show in the summer night, you're going to see the sunset kind of coming down over the show. And it's just really, really lovely place to watch a show in the summer. Now, you said Chris Simpson, the executive director, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Actually works in the gardens himself? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he works in the gardens himself. Um, he did a lot of the building, um, a lot of the construction work for the building himself. So we're a very hands-on company. If you come to see a a show at the theater, you're likely to see one of us behind the bar or one of us, you know, doing some gardening work or one of us doing all types of different things um, around the theater to make it go. 
a true experience of making the theater work no matter what it takes, right? Yes, absolutely. Now, besides the location, the theater has a great website, and it's very easy to remember the website. It's just the name, so you can the thecontemporarytheater.com. So check that out. If As we're talking along this evening, if you want to check out uh, all the things that are going on there, because... Tammy could talk for a long time tonight and not be able to tell you all the things that are happening because so much is happening all the time. Um, and if you have any questions and you want to call, you can do it the old-fashioned way. Pick up your phone off the wall there and uh, call the operator and say, please connect me with Tammy at the Contemporary Theater, and Sarah will do that for you. Or just dial the number, 401-218-0282. So if you know, like ticket information or other things, the questions you have, uh, give them a call or check it out online first. That's the easiest way to do it. Now, I looked at your calendar for August, and uh, it's, it's, it's full. <laughs> yes. Now, there's, there's usually one day off, and that's usually Tuesday, mm-hmm. right? Is that when you all rest? Yeah, I mean, well, we, we try to we have at least one day where we don't have programming going on, but often there'll be a show rehearsing that night or something along those lines. So um, we, we try to take care of ourselves and take days off when we can, but we try to have stuff going on for the public as much as possible. So there's no, this is not a summer theater or summer stock or anything like that. This is a year-round adventure for you, right? Yes, absolutely. Summer is certainly our busiest time. It's the time when we do have things going on six nights a week. But as you say, we produce shows all year long. Um, We produce um, a big fall show indoors. Um, And this year it's going to be called the Thanksgiving Play. Um, So that's going to be really fun to work on. And then at Christmas time, we're going to be presenting a Christmas story um, based on the famous movie, you know, You'll Shoot Your Eye Out. (laughs) So that will be a lot of fun. Or the leg lamp. The leg lamp, exactly, (laughs) exactly. So that's going to be a lot of fun too. And then in the winters, we host a Wakefield Idol competition, which is a singing competition featuring um, local amateur singers from all around the region really come and, and perform in this competition. It's about a 12-week long competition, and folks kind of get eliminated as the weeks go on, and then by the end of it, we crown the Wakefield Idol. So that happens in the winter, Um, and then we have, um, in the spring, we like to feature new works. So we have our Springboard Festival, where community members can submit their ideas for new shows, um, and we present those in the spring. We also often have another play um, that's a little bit more kind of off the beaten path, a little bit more out of the mainstream, a little bit more whimsical type of play in the spring. Could be called avant-garde. Or, well, more avant-garde. Yeah. 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 We kind of, um, we, we have different sections of the year that kind of like serve different purposes for our audiences. So we kind of go a little bit off the beaten path in the mm-hmm. spring often, and then we're right back into the summer. And um, as you say, we're, we're pretty busy um, at this time of year. It's not uncommon for us to have, a show that's up and running and then two or three shows that are also in rehearsals at the same time. So definitely very busy at the theater. Let's back up a minute and talk a little bit about you since you haven't been a regular guest on conducting conversations, but I hope that changes and we get to hear from you more often, but let's find out about you. Are you a Rhode Island person? I am. Yes. I'm born and raised in Rhode Island. Um, I live all the way in Cranston. Wow. Um, yeah. You commute from Cranston to Wakefield? <laughs> yes, yes. <Wow. laughs> um, and it's something I've been, I love the theater and um, the drive actually is it's pretty nice. It's pretty calming. Um, and I, I mentioned we just had our 10 year anniversary at, in this building, in the space at the mm-hmm. CTC. And um, I was in that show that was uh, in the very first show that we did in this, in our new home. And so ten um, years ago, ten years ago, yeah. And you're only nineteen, so yeah, exactly. I, I was just a wee wee child then. Um. <laughs> Not exactly, but but it's interesting. You know, I, I drive from Providence to Exeter every morning. Uh, I live in Providence, so a lot of people in Rhode Island that that half an hour or so commute isn't too bad. And same for you. Where did uh, where did you go to school in Cranston or? I actually grew up in Providence. Okay. Um, so I went to high school in Providence. Went to classical. 
and um, public school. I'm a public school kid from Head Start through college because I went to Rhode Island College as well. Cool. Um, majored in theater uh, in Rhode Island College. And um, for quite a while um, in my adult life, I was kind of trying to figure out what I wanted to do. You know, a career in theater isn't always the most practical thing. So I was trying to find ways to pay the bills. And um, eventually I became a freelance actor, director, performer. And I did that for about 10 years um, until the pandemic hit. And then uh, it was a, it was a tough um, environment for freelance performers for, for then. Everyone, for right? everyone, and Everyone certainly. in the performance business, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so the opportunity came um, for the theater to kind of move in a different direction. And I had been associate artistic director at the theater for a little over a year before that. And um, so it, it seemed like a, um, a logical progression for me in my career and for the theater to kind of expand and grow and kind of bring in new perspectives and new um, additions to the leadership team. Um, and so I've been in this position since um, officially since about December of 2020, but like the theater was still closed you're then. Right. So, so, yeah. <laughs> so, but so now you're so, now you're really getting into it, and yes. uh, this season is uh, thankfully uh, starting to get a little bit back to normal. Mm -hmm. um, we want to go to a piece of music, and I know you brought uh, a couple different pieces of music with you. This first one is uh, Tish Adams, and Tish is a well-known performer in the Southern New England area. And uh, how does she tie into uh, to your theater? So it's a, actually a funny story. Um, I mentioned the Wakefield Idol competition that we have, and I'm one of the judges for that. And so basically a performer will get up in front of the audience, do their song, and then um, the judges will give them a little critique or give them a little encouragement. And we needed a last minute fill in judge one night. Um, and so we were connected with Tish Adams um, through Eden Castile, actually, um, referred Tish to us. And so she came and did a guest night of judging at Wakefield Idol. She was a huge hit. Everyone fell in love with her. And then we realized that we have great opportunities for her to perform at our space. Um, so we also have our Afterglow summer concerts out on our patio. And um, Tish was one of the performers at the Afterglow concerts. It was uh, really wonderful. Back in, in July, she performed with us. Excellent. All right. So we'll hear a little from Tish Adams and friends, and then we'll take a short break, and we'll be back with more. <laughs> Come in and join the party We're running out of cheer Don't be too surprised If you find no one else is here They say that people judge you By the company you choose But some of my best friends are the blues I'm sitting in my rocker, but I don't feel at home. If misery is company, I'm better off alone. I've been walking round in circles since I got my walking shoes. Some of my best friends are the Tuck me in bed every night The blues, they're all around me The blues are everywhere Right now the blues surround me I've got blues with blues to spare Yeah, they know my baby left me Cause they came here with the Best friends of the
join the party, thank you, Gino. I'm running out of tears. Don't be too surprised if you find no one else is here. They say that people judge you by the company you choose. Some of my best friends are the blues. Here I sit in my rocker, but I don't feel at home. When misery is company, I'm better off alone. I've been walking around in circles since I got my walking shoes. Some of my best friends are the blues. The blues, they come and go. Contemporary Theatre Company is the subject of tonight's Conducting Conversations. I'm Mike Mano, very pleased to be sitting with Tammy Brown. She is the Artistic Director of the Theatre, which is located in beautiful downtown Wakefield. And if you haven't been there before, you should get there. It's an interesting experience. I've had the privilege of actually uh, performed on the grounds last year with my quartet in your open space that you call the patio now? Yes, yes. Right, for a Wakefield uh, Art Week, whatever it was. I can't remember the actual title. Yeah. The street was closed. There were vendors. Oh, was, um, like and, Oktoberfest? Or? Yeah, that's what it was, Oktoberfest. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, it's, an, it's a very nice space, and as you mentioned, nice gardens and so forth. Uh, the bar wasn't open when we were there. I don't get it. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, for I don't for, think it was finished actually. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely for um, where I'm going to be hosting Oktoberfest again, actually this year on October first, um, and the bar will definitely be open. Okay. Um, <laughs> as well as um, endless summer um, is. August 27th, and again, we've been talking about the music that we host at the theater in addition to the plays, and that's going to be another great showcase for local musicians. Excellent. All right. Well, if someone goes to the website, which is very easy to find, thecontemporarytheater.com, check out all the events. One of the things you'll find out is that a new production is opening this Friday. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, It's not not a production in the... uh, the, the, that most people might expect is not a very real well-known play or musical or anything like that, right? Is this uh, something that uh, is new? Well, yeah, it's relatively new. It, it's uh, I think part of the reason why a lot of people haven't heard of it is because it's relatively new. Um, it was written within the last few years, um, but it's kind of making the rounds in like regional theaters. Um, And I think that's in part because of the casting of it and the way um, the playwright asks you to cast the play, but also because of, you know, we've been having a lot of conversations, I think, in the culture about history and about um, what our history means and who gets to tell 
what stories and what stories uh, matter and what stories are kind of put to the forefront um, when we're talking about the education system or we're talking about just how we remember our own history as Americans. And so I think this play in particular kind of speaks to that in a certain way. And so I think that's why um, you're seeing more and more regional theaters kind of pick this show up because it is very quirky, but it also addresses those kind of issues of history and storytelling. The title is Men in Both. Boats, right? Men on boats. Men on boats. Mm-hmm. Sorry about that. Uh, yep. Men on boats. And it's uh, now I have a better understanding of what it might be about versus uh, uh, guys going out fishing for the day. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not exactly about uh, guys going out fishing. Um, it's actually about, it's by Jacqueline Backhouse, and it's about a real life expedition. Um, to map the Colorado River in 1869. So, you know, if you're even somewhat familiar with the history of the United States, then it was kind of frontier times and there were a lot of expeditions going out. Um, Lewis and Clark is probably the most famous one, but there were all kinds of expeditions going out to like map the country that was, you know, part of the United States at that time. Um, But of course, the interesting thing is that that whole idea of going to like map out a a country that other people had already been living on for tens of thousands of years um, is kind of a a silly proposition when you think about it. And so that's part of what this play looks at because it takes, it's based on the real life uh, journals and diary entries of the folks who were on this expedition. They were all um, white men, of course, that went on this expedition in 1869 um, and, um, William Powell was the leader of this expedition. So a lot of it was, comes from his, um, journal entries and his writings and his, his perspective, perspective. Yeah, yeah. exactly his perspective of what he was doing and like charting this new frontier. And so what Jacqueline Backhouse has done is based her play on the events of those journals, but also with kind of a modern perspective on it and kind of shining a light on how, um, silly it is to think that you know folks who kind of come to this land like way after other folks have been there (laughs) now are responsible for like naming the rivers and naming the um the mountains and and things like that and 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 believing that they're the first people to ever see these things when like me drive getting on a boat going to block island say oh look what i found what i I discovered mikesville (laughs) exactly 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 so um so the play talk addresses that in interesting ways and also because of the way the show is cast it's called men on boats and originally in eight the 1869 expedition it would have been all men on these boats um and the way that the play is cast none of the actors Actors are men. They're all uh, women or non-binary folks. Um, so there's no cis men in the cast. And so then you kind of have this through the lens of, you know, um, of patriarchy kind of and like what makes a story feel relevant today. Because I think if you staged this play where it was entirely cast by with white men filling the cast, it would feel like a historical relic and it would you would wonder what makes it relevant today but i think mm-hmm. when you flip the casting on its head and we, this is something we often do with all different types of plays at the contemporary theater but with this play it's how it's written into the script when you take that casting flip it's on flip it on its head and change the perspective of who's telling the story it kind of makes you examine things in a new way and so i that's why I picked this show to do because I, I liked how it was kind of like subverting the the perspective that we're used to in terms of historical accounts. Absolutely. And and the audience gets to think about that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think that's part of it. I like I don't think the answer is to like ignore the history that we have, but I think if you can present it in a way that makes it feel relevant today and makes mm-hmm. it feel like, okay, we have a new perspective and a new way to think about and process these things. I think that's healthy. Some people are fearful of that. Some people don't want to change their perspective on history, but I think that's how we move forward as a society. That's how we learn more about ourselves as Americans is having a greater, more well-rounded perspective on who we are and where we come from. Excellent. And we have a piece of music called the Canyoneers, which makes a lot of sense, obviously. 
talking about going down the canyon and uh, on the Colorado River, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, the expedition um, begins in like the kind of Midwest area, and then the ending point is the Great the Grand Canyon, which it wasn't called the Grand Canyon yet. I think they call it like the Great Canyon in the play, but that's kind of the the end point. And I think it's really interesting that it the whole thing kind of is about like how how do you tame sort of wilderness and how do you kind of like, how do you navigate all of the, these things and uh, the human being and wilderness and like, how do you, you know, how, how do you make that work? And then it kind of ends in this like sort of awe inspiring place of the Grand Canyon, which of course belongs to nobody. It, it right. can't be tamed. It was never named after anybody because how could you name such a like awe inspiring place after one person? So. Excellent. We'll listen to that, then take another short break, and we'll be back with more of Tammy. Come listen, and I'll tell a tale of hardy canyoneers That breed of men, the river rats, who live without the fears Of common ordinary men Whose worries sure are small Compared to those who flirt with death Beneath that high gray wall What's in a man that makes him thirst For the kind of life he knows is cursed He'll die a lonely river rat Foolhardy canyoneer If you've ever wondered what you'd do When all the chips were down If you doubt you'd do what a man would do When danger comes around Then take the test to prove the case To see if courage pauses as the waves leap 30 feet or more On the trip through lava falls What's in a man that makes him thirst For the kind of life he knows is cursed He'll die a lonely river rat Foolhardy can If you've ever wondered what you'd do When all the chips were down If you doubt you'd do what a man would do When danger comes around Then take the test to prove the case To see if courage pauses As the waves leap thirty feet or more on the trip through lava falls What's in a man that makes him thirst For the kind of life he knows is cursed He'll die a lonely river rat Foolhardy can Night at rest on a rocky beach, he hears an eerie sigh. The lonely phantoms of the gorge, whose mournful voices cry. Although we ran the rapids wild, and with our lives did pay. Welcome you, you river rats Who come this dismal way What's in a man to make him thirst For the kind of life he knows is cursed He'll die a lonely river rat Foolhardy can
Contemporary Theater Company in Wakefield is the subject of tonight's Conducting Conversations. I'm Mike Mano. Very pleased to be sitting with Tammy Brown, the Artistic Director of the Theater. And we've been talking about some of the major things going on, a little bit of background about the theater and a little bit about her background. And uh, we've talked uh, about specific events, and uh, we've got a lot more to talk about, Tammy. Uh, yes. So, <laughs> so let's get right in it. We, we were playing music that was involved with men on boats, mm-hmm. and we talked about that in the last segment particularly. Uh, we'll go out at the end with another piece of music related to that. But in the meantime, um, As You Like It is playing now at the theater. And uh, as a matter of fact, playing as we speak. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, uh, so someone is there hopefully doing your job and making sure everything goes well. But uh, there's only five performances left for As You Like It. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so that As You Like It is the return of our Shakespeare on the Saga Tucket series. We've been talking a lot about our patio space, and we use that for uh, music performances. But the origin of why we originally wanted to build a patio was that so we could present Shakespeare out there, like kind of traditional Shakespeare outdoors in the summer. Um, it's 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 a really wonderful thing to experience. And so we do Shakespeare plays out there on our patio. Um, right now it's As You Like It. It runs um, on Wednesday and Sunday nights at 7 o'clock, um, right up until August 24th. So if you haven't had a chance to see it yet, definitely check it out. It's a really fun, exciting, energetic show. Um, and it's just, it's just a beautiful spot to kind of sit and watch a play. And we often have folks who um, will come have a seat, watch the show, then go, you know, at intermission, go to Brickley's, get an ice cream, come back, watch the rest of the show. Um, and there's lots of other restaurants nearby yes. that, uh, you know, you could have dinner at before or something afterwards. But, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great spot to visit. Now, uh, I just want to be clear, the there's a, a performance going on right now tonight, but then the next one is on the 10th. The one after that would be the 14th, Sunday night. Then Wednesday the 17th. Sunday the 21st and Wednesday the 24th. So it's the last opportunity to see that. Is it uh, what people think they're going to see when you hear the term as you like it? Uh, Do they expect to see a Shakespearean uh, experience? Um, I think so. Um, I think the one of the fun things with Shakespeare is that you can you can and, and probably should every time you re- revisit it, you kind of can put your own spin on it and put your own kind of creative um, spark to it. And so I think this one is is fairly traditional, but I think one of the ways that we try to approach Shakespeare is to make it feel real and honest and accessible for people. So I hope that folks don't go there and, and just feel like they're kind of being talked at and proclaimed to and shouted at and and what have you Um, we try to make the characters feel honest and and sincere and make the relationships really strong um but yeah i think um it's pretty much what you would think of when you when you think of as you like it um it's funny with shakespeare there tend to be certain plays that are kind of like in the zeitgeist and so you see them performed a lot all at once and um as you like it is one of Shakespeare's more famous comedies, um, but I haven't seen it around much lately. So um, when I tell folks that we're doing it, it tends to be one of folks' favorite Shakespeare shows, but it hasn't really been performed around very recently, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's just a great way to get back in touch with maybe a Shakespeare play that you may have seen years ago, but haven't seen in in quite a while. In a very relaxed, pleasant atmosphere. Yes, yes. Okay. Now... Should I ask what happens if one of those nights that we mentioned it's raining? What yes. happens then? Well, um, we've gone back and forth about this um, a lot over the course of our history of performing on the patio. Um, but probably if the if it's raining, then the show would likely be canceled for that evening, and we would probably put out a, um, an announcement like two hours before the yeah, show. Just so check the website or whatever. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah check okay. the website. Let you know. Check and see. We we try to get it on 
um, as uh, much as we possibly can. And there have been times we have this, we have a lovely lobby now. So sometimes mm-hmm. we might, you know, showers might pass. You might right, go might in. Might be a delay. You might delay. Minutes, you yeah. might go in there for a little bit, grab a little drink, and then come out and you know finish the show. Like we've done that before. But um, we're hoping, fingers crossed, for good weather. Now, are tickets available in advance, or do you just buy them that night? Yeah, tickets are available in advance um, if you like, or you can buy them um, right at the theater the night of. Um, it's great for folks to buy tickets ahead. You never know um, how uh, shows are going to sell and how busy they're going to be. So kind of making the plans ahead is great for it's everybody. possible it could be sold out, right? It's possible, yeah. So I you, mean, You don't want to be shut out, so go online and buy them in advance would be the way to do it. Yeah. Do you have a box office on site? Um, we do have a box office on site. Yes. Um, it's one of those things where, like I said before, we're kind of all, um, uh, we have, we have a pretty small staff relatively mm-hmm. speaking. And so we all kind of chip in and kind of work those things together. Um, so you could come to the theater and, and buy a ticket there. You certainly right before a show, we'll have somebody set up to sell tickets, uh, through the box office, but it could be one of, it'll be one of our staff members that's there to So that leads me to another question. If you're, um, the kind of theater that I, I think you are, where you're trying to involve the community and be involved with the community. Uh, can people volunteer to help out? Is there a way for people to uh, get to you and say, hey, you, I would love to be you know, selling tickets or be a bartender or help Chris with the gardens or whatever? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you can reach out to us anytime. Um, we also have an email address, info at thecontemporarytheater.com. Um, you can always email us, um, or when you stop by the theater, let us know you want to volunteer. We always need ushers for shows. So if you want to check out a show and don't want to pay for the ticket price, um, you're welcome to come help us usher. We always need help with that. Or yeah, we help with box office, um, help with building sets. You know, if you have like some carpentry skills, you want to help us with that. We always accept that. Or you just want to learn more about being part of theater, we always welcome volunteers. And that leads us to the next part, that uh, it takes a lot of money to run an operation like you do. You have a small staff, but you still have a staff, Mm -hmm. and that costs money in itself. The building obviously costs money, and then put on all the productions with the costuming, uh, the rights to shows, all of the things that takes, and that takes donations from the community. So uh, I would encourage you, if you're listening right now, to go out and check out the website and click on the Donate button, right? They can do that anytime they want. Yes, absolutely. We are a nonprofit theater, so we um, really thrive based on the support from the community around us. And honestly, during um, the pandemic, we had to shut down our operations, as did did every theater around. Um, And we were really kept afloat by really generous support from members of our community that kind of stepped up in small numbers and large numbers to kind of help keep us going. And that we still need that because there's not as much government support now as there used to be. But... um, But we're still kind of rebuilding. We're still rebuilding our audience. So if you haven't come to see a show at the CTC, at the Contemporary Theater Company, um, I do encourage you to come check it out. Um, It's a really great place to spend a summer or winter or spring or fall evening. Um, So we're trying to get the word out and rebuild our audience. Um, But until the audiences are fully back to capacity, then um, donation support is really something that's vital to us to help us continue to grow and continue to support local artists and continue to make all the tons of different shows that we make every year. Right. Any particular uh, uh, benefit that you've gotten from some sponsors or anything like that that you want to mention? Yeah, absolutely. We um, So we have a, a lot of support from community donors, but we also have really great ties to um, the local businesses in Wakefield. Like if you've ever been to Main Street in Wakefield, it's the streets are lined with all different kinds of local businesses. And we try to stay connected to all of them in different ways. Um, and so two businesses right on Main Street stepped up to sponsor um, our whole season together, um, and that's uh, Thunder Mist um, Convenient Care, um, which is a really wonderful place to get your health care needs taken care of, really community-oriented, very inclusive place um, to get your health care taken care of. And then um, Paul Massey Chevrolet at the other, other end of Main Street um, has really 
been a great community partner as well. They offer discounts for folks that come to see shows at CTC, and they've stepped up to help make all of our shows possible this year. And that's, those are just two of the many different um, business partners that we have within our community. And, you know, if anybody out there has a business, or maybe it's a small business, maybe it's um, uh, something that you want to reach our audience about, like, go ahead and contact us. We have ads in our playbill. We have, you could sponsor a night of a show. You can sponsor a summer concert. Um, and then we can kind of give you a shout out to all the folks who come and see our shows every year. So, and the, all of that put together is what helps to kind of keep us going. Excellent. All right. I know you have a lot of other programs. I want to touch on those before we finish up. Uh, tell us about classes and so forth that are held. Yes. So um, we will be bringing some classes back um, in the fall. We often offer classes for um, young folks, for kids and teens um, in theater. We offer uh, generally, we offer it like a Saturday morning drama club where folks can kind of come together, young folks, um, and work on plays. Um, we also offer classes for adults. So we offer beginning improv classes, and we I hope to be able to offer um, intro to acting, like scripted classes as well. Um, so that's a great part of how we kind of build our community and, and grow the folks who want to work with us and produce theater with us. Um, many of the folks who you see on stage now, including folks in our we have a whole improv program that I didn't even mention. We do, we host improv festivals and we do full length improv shows. And many of the folks who are featured in those are folks who started with improv 101 and just took all the classes with us and built their confidence and built their skills. And now they're really, um, uh, top notch improvisers. So if it's something you're interested in trying out, come on down and uh, take a class at, at the Contemporary. The key to all of this, of course, is check out the website. Mm -hmm. Most of these things are listed there, and you can take advantage of them. There's so much to talk about that uh, we don't have time tonight to do all that. But So check out the website, and uh, don't, don't be hesitant to click that Donate button and see if you can help out Contemporary Theater Company. Tammy, I want to thank you so much for coming in tonight, telling us a little bit about it. I look forward to your next visit. Uh, and maybe in a few months down the line, we can catch up and see how the summer went and uh, new things that are happening in the fall. And uh, it's, it's, been a, it's been a real pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And I just want to remind folks, we have a new play opening this week. It's Men on Boats. We've been talking about that throughout um, throughout the show today. And I would love for folks to come in and check that out. It starts uh, August 12th this Friday. All right. We'll go out with one more piece of music related to that. And then the next time on Conducting Conversations, we'll see what we can come up with. Thanks, Tammy. Thank you. It's been a long time since you've seen her. Could have been three years or more Will she be waiting when we dock, boys? Like the others, will she be gone? It's one more pull, boys, that'll do, boys Soon we'll draw alongside Hoist her upward, swing her in board for the journey's nearly done Well, you're looking mighty smart, boy Dressed up in your number ones You scrounged a new blade from the purser To scrape the bum fluff from off your chin It's one more pull, boys, that'll do, boys Soon we'll draw alongside Hoist her upward, swing her in board For the journey's nearly done When we fixed those bow and stern lines And you've scuttled down the gangway If she's waiting there, just kiss her Turn around Give us a smile It's one more pull, boys That'll do, boys Soon we'll draw
draw alongside Hoist her upward, swing her in board For the journey's nearly done Well, we too will go ashore soon Get drunk in the clubs and bars And stagger homeward Pockets empty Like so many times before It's one more pull, boys That'll do, boys Soon we'll draw alongside Hoist her upward Swing her in board For the journey's nearly done Well, a man may take a wife, boy And a man may take a mistress But a sailor has his ship, boys And his mistress, it is the sea It's one more pull, boys, thou do, boys Soon we'll draw alongside Hoist her upward, swing her in board For the journey's nearly done It's one more pull, boys, I'll do, boys. Soon we'll draw alongside, hoist her upward, swing her in board. For the journey now is done. Conducting Conversations was brought to you by Roberts Musical Instruments, using music and the arts to keep your child educated, entertained, and having fun. Roberts Musical Instruments is your key to musical success. Call 823-5459. That's 823-5459.